Hello everyone, hope you find yourself having a great day. I've got a nice uh, set of tips and tricks for you today regarding your layout in Cinema 4D and the customizations of your project settings. So I'm going to fire up Cinema 4D. And by default, normally when Cinema 4D loads up, you'll get a uh, timeline of 90 frames per, or 90 uh, frames and uh, certain attributes that apply whenever you drop primitives and whatnot into your scene. Under your project settings, you've got a frame per second that you may prefer. Some people work in 60 frames per second, others uh, 29, 9, 7. Um, by default, it gives you 30 frames per second. I'd like to increase my timeline from the default 90 to 600. So you'll do that here and here. And when you drop in new primitives, you get them uh, by default uh, a medium to dark gray color. I'm going to adjust mine to a lighter blue just for this example. And at this point, you've got a few other tweaks. You've got information, for example, author, copyright, and any other information you may want to apply to any saved documents that you uh, save out and share with others. Uh, by default, whatever you put here will be applied to those saved documents. So you may have a website or tweak information or links to uh, things or just comments about the project. We've got dynamics, uh, a time scale which is important. By default, the time scale is 100. And when you play something back in regards to an, uh, elements that may have a uh, physical uh, physics attribute applied to them, the time scale, what that does is affect the speed at which they play back. And by default, Cinema 4D often plays back at a rate that has almost a slow motion effect applied to it. Uh, if you increase this time scale to something along the lines of 325 to 350%, you get a much more natural, real-world uh, uh, view of how things react in, in regard to their movement when they have physical uh, physics apply tags applied to them. So keep that in mind. If you want something to look more real-world, more believable, up that to about 325 or 350%. Okay. So back under our project settings, once we've tweaked these the way that we want them, how do we apply them to every uh, scene that we open in the future? It's pretty easy. We're going to save this document, an empty document, and that can apply in regards to the way that you've got it laid out. You can have a camera set up already. Uh, you can have a cube, a plane, a background. However you want every document that you open in the future to open, set it up just the way that you like it now, and then we're going to save it. So file, save as, and what we're going to do is we're going to save this to our C drive or the location of the drive that you have Cinema 40 installed on. Typically, it's going to be on your C drive um, under your program files. But to save this so that it's default settings, we're going to need to go to our users directory. So we're going to be C users directory and if for some reason you don't see users, click up top under your path and you'll be able to type users here. But it's available to us in this example so we're going to go into it. And what we have before us is a default account that's installed on Windows. This is the account that I installed when I installed Windows. An administrator account is a default system administrator account that has access and rights to all folders and, and uh, areas on a computer. So we're going to, for example, if you've installed Windows on your account and you have administrative privileges, by all means go into your own account uh, for this example. But for me, I'm going to enter into the administrator directory. What we're going to look for now is a, file, a folder that has hidden attributes, so it's not visible here, but it is available. If we go up top and type slash app data, app data, all one word, hit enter, we'll see now that we've changed our path from C users administrator app data. Okay, we're going to need to go into the roaming, and at this point we're going to browse for Maxon. So let's scroll down to Maxon, enter into the Maxon folder. And you're going to pick the version of the Cinema 4D which you're managing the settings for. I have two versions installed on my computer, R14 and R13. For this example, we're going to go into R13. And now, once you're in that directory, you're simply going to name it new.c4d. You're going to save your work area as a Cinema 4D file by the name of new at the destination path that we're in. So save that. If you already have one, overwrite it. And now, the settings that we've made, if I close Cinema 4D and then I launch Cinema 4D, you'll see that it's retained all of our settings, our frames per second, our timeline uh, length, our color for any primitives that we now apply to, newly apply to our scene, 
and uh, that's going to make it uh, so that you don't have to go through all these settings each and every time you open an, or create a new document to begin to work in. So part two of this is going to be how do we add custom elements, custom commands to our toolbars up top. This is very easy. For those of you who don't know, uh, by the default layout in Cinema 4 e you've got a layout drop down here that has a variety of layouts. One for animation where your tools are specific uh, to animation. You've got one for 3D body paint. There's uh, specific to uh, painting uh, on your surfaces. One for a UV edit that's going to allow you to tweak uh, UVs for export. And uh, then you've got your default startup, which is how you'd see normally when you start up Cinema 4D. So with this uh, layout, if you'd like to add customizations here, say for example you use Content Browser a lot, rather than having to go to Window, Content Browser, or you know how finicky some of these commands can be, these drop downs, some of them get lengthy and confusing and some, and, and they just get weird, you know what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do is we would right click here in an area where there's nothing on the toolbar and do Customize Palette. Okay, here we get all available uh, commands in Cinema 4D. Now, if you know specifically one that you'd like to apply, you'd type us into search and it would bring up a criteria that matches that search. Or you can just scroll through the list of all available commands, which is rather lengthy. So I'm going to, for this example, use a Content Browser. So I'll start typing Content and you see that we've got Content Browser. And I will just drag that up here into one of these slots. And uh, let's say I wanted to uh, use the position size rotation function. I would do PSR and that's going to give me the reset position size and rotation uh, command and I'll put that right there. It's not uh, active because there's no object to reset. But in any case, let me put one here and you would see if I were to adjust that and move it over here and let's say I needed that reset into the center of our world, I would just simply do that. So, not a tutorial on that, but an example of uh, this function of a bu button that we've applied to our command. So, let's say we want to save this um, as a custom command. What we do is we would just simply go to Window, Customization, Save Layout As. And what that's going to do is give us a, a, an opportunity to give this a custom name. You could call it um, My Preferred or Layout One or something, anything you want. But if you want this layout to be present and available to, you, to each time you start up Cinema 4D, you would save it as Window, Customization, Save as Startup Layout. Okay, And I've already done that. And under my Startup Layout, uh, for me, for my user account, I would click that and it will be available to me with any of the custom commands that I've applied. So if I close Cinema 4D, right, and I fire Cinema 4D back up, you will see that my default layout, my startup layout for me, is set with my custom buttons and available in my menu. So this is going to be a big time saver for you. Once you get it tweaked out the way that you like it, uh, you won't have to go through manipulating all these settings and trying maybe to remember what you did that uh, got you the best results for the way that you work. So I hope this is helpful to you and uh, save you a bunch of time in the future. Remember, if you'd like to see more of these videos, Comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.